Um, and I wasn't really sure what direction I was going to go in with it. Uh, I figured it would be, it would make more sense for us to do, you know, when I had something to talk about as far as my YouTube channel goes. Yeah, we could, um, we could, we could. So can... I don't even know if I'm. Yeah, we could talk a little bit about that. Uh, we could talk a little bit about your YouTube channel as well. All you have to do is stay a minute. Just take your time. The clock is ticking, so stay. All you have to do is stay. Yo, 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 that's what's up. We always doing it live, and I do it big for the LOM community. What's going on, everybody? Yes, sir. Uh, I am your host. With the most Lockout Menzi. What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Lockout Men Podcast Show, the show that just never stops. And I am here this morning, live with the LOM community. What's going on, LOM community? I'm not sure if I got sound over there, but do I got sound? Give me thumbs up. Give me thumbs up if I got sound. If I sound crisp and clean over there. Let me know. Let me know. And if you guys like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more. When I come on, I go live just about, I don't every, I don't know, every day. That depends on if I have somebody to talk to or something to talk about. You know what I'm saying? So let's, uh, let's get into it. Today's episode, oh wait, I forgot, my bad, my bad. You guys want to support the channel? Y'all can do that. Y'all can support me. Hook your boy up with some coffee. You know what I'm saying? That's the uh, the dollar sign. Lockout men. You know what I'm saying? At the cash app or the coffee app. It doesn't matter, man. I'm always thirsty. But this episode is going to be brought to you by the best water on the planet. Smart water. Y'all see this right here? I wish I was hip to this way beforehand. But anyway, that's some good water, though, for real. But anyway... In today's episode, I would like, uh, let's start that over. In today's episode, man, I have met this young lady on, uh, from YouTube. She had, uh, she has a YouTube channel, uh, uh, you know, chronicling, chronicling her journey in trucking. Um, unfortunately, the first video that popped up in my feed was a little situation that she got into with with uh, a battle with the scale <laughs> we, we'll ask her about that for a little bit to find out but we're going to talk to her and more see what she's been at see if she's still trucking see if she's still uh in the game and everything and if not see where she at right now i would like to bring to the stage miss grateful tread trucking to the show thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. So grateful, grateful tread. Um, that's a that's a real interesting name for for female. Um, where out of all out of all trucking tag names to come up with, why you come up with uh grateful tread? Well, you know, I never really thought about it too too much, but I guess I um. I wanted to do a play on uh, on the on Grateful Dead, the band, um, and I was just talking to a friend of mine, and I was trying to figure out what I should call my my uh, my LLC when I was starting up with Prime, um, and I said I wanted to be like a uh, a play on Grateful Dead because I wanted I wanted to have my hippie roots in there. I didn't want people to forget who I was just because I'm a trucker, a big bad trucker. You know, I'm not I'm not I'm not you know I didn't change. I am who I am. So I had my uh, my friend said, what about Grateful Tread? And I was like, Grateful Tread, that's awesome. So naturally, it also became my YouTube channel name. So, so, so Grateful tr- Grateful Tread. So are are you a are you a fan of the of the band Grateful Dead? I, I am. I wouldn't I wouldn't call myself a super fan or anything. I'm more into like the alternative, you know, pop punk uh old you know the early 2000s emo primo all that kind of stuff but i i I like all music i really uh, like across the board the only music i can't stand is like that crappy country music that that they come up with on the radio or they have a fake accent you know i don't like that stuff but so you don't other than that i really like all 
Well, you know, you you know Taylor Swift. She started off as a as as a country as a country singer before she she bounced over to pop. So you you talking oh, about? She's actually our right. Oh, she's a good she's a good singer. Mm-hmm. Um, I think she is. Anyway, some people might beg to differ. Um, yeah. but that's neither here nor there <laughs> <laughs> all right grateful all right grateful so let's uh let's start with uh let's start with your story man uh so what made you decide to well what you was doing first like what before you got into trucking what what would you do what you was doing before you got into trucking uh well i just moved i was like probably i was living in california for about a year year and a half <clears throat> at that point maybe two years I was probably in California for two years. I just moved there from New York and I was trying the, the freelance lifestyle out. Um, I was doing video editing, photography, you know, just little jobs here and there that I could get my hands on. And I think at the time I always had my, I always had like a regular job too on top of it, which didn't really pay the bills, but it gave me some sense of security that I had a guaranteed paycheck because when you're freelancing, it's kind of like being a lease operator while you're trucking. You don't really have a guaranteed pay. <laughs> oh, okay. So I always had like a regular um, a regular job on the side. And at that point, I think what I was doing was I was doing, um, I was stocking like the, the clothes of the merchandise at Macy's mm-hmm. in early in the morning. Um, wasn't I was only working like 20 hours a week though. And then, you know, other than that, it was my hustle. And I just, it wasn't enough money. And I had a friend of mine. I was complaining to, and he was telling me he could he could train me and get me my CDL, and I could make a ton of money if I came over and I started uh, training with him at Prime. And he was an old roommate of, me, of mine, <clears throat> so I was like, "Well, we lived together once, so I don't see why you know we can't train to you know you can't train me on the truck. I think we can handle it, you know." And luckily, um, it wasn't as stressful as some of the training experiences I've heard. So, so I think uh, I lucked out training so you mentioned so so of course you uh you you got into it uh by way of a friend and i i guess they was the one that got you to come over to prime as your as your first company to to come out with yep all right so did you get your cdls uh through them as well yeah i got my cdl through prime and uh and i did I did about a year and a half with them total. All right. So you uh so you got your CDLs through Prime and you went through their training, but you you trained with your with your buddy, right? You you didn't train with nobody yeah. else. Yeah, no, I didn't train. I didn't I did um uh, you know, yeah, as soon as I got on a truck, I was on his truck. I never had to get on anybody else's truck. He he drove for Prime, he was a lease op. And I uh, stayed on his truck for probably about I don't know, eight months straight. Eight months. Wow. Yeah. Because I, yeah. I know I know Prime changed their uh their their policies for, you know, training new drivers. Um, I believe it was like thirty thousand miles at one point and now they upped it to like a whole 60. fifty. Like so oh, 50. that's what it was. So fifty so fifty thousand miles, uh is that more or less than the required that you went out for eight for, oh, uh, for eight months? Way more. I, um, well, okay. So over the eight months, a lot of that was by choice. Um, we had an interesting situation. I don't know. I don't want to. Um, it's, it's kind of an interesting situation. It might it might enlighten some viewers that are uh, listeners that are thinking about getting into the game here. Um, we started out when I started. He was flatbed, so I did all my TSP. Um, I did my, my road test, my backing, everything. I did all that on flatbeds. Um, and while we were driving around for a while, you know, doing the, the 30,000 miles, uh, somewhere in the middle of that, I decided that why don't we switch to Reaper? You know, like he, he was thinking about it and I, I didn't really want to go. I wanted to go solo and I knew that I didn't really want to handle those parts by myself out there. Um, so we went Reaper. And in that, in the process of going reefer, they wanted me to stay on his truck a little bit longer. Uh, so I willingly stayed on his truck longer just because I didn't want to be, I didn't want to go solo flatbed. So that, my situation was not normal. Um, okay, okay, first. okay. 
Okay, so you so you started out as wanting to go flatbed, but then you decided you you decided that the route for you was to go reefer. Yeah, and he and he was flatbed when I started, so I didn't really have a choice. I just wanted to train with somebody I knew, so I I was on the flatbed truck, which we had. I I had a lot of fun doing that, but um, I just didn't want to have to deal with climbing all over. Um, a load and tarping it in the in the elements, you know, the wind, the rain, the snow, the ice. I saw him go through some stuff, and I didn't. I would, you know, I was kind of like a wuss, and I hid in the truck when we were having some crazy weather, and he was out there doing it himself. Now I'm not gonna pretend I'm perfect. Now you say you now you <laughs> so say like, you, now you say you rocked out for uh, prime for about a year, year and a half. So of course you you met your obligations for your CDL, right? Yeah, I, I I beyond met my obligations for my CDL. Uh, that was a quick. That was quick. We just went out for a couple of weeks, and I came back and took my test, and I had my CDL. Um, okay, okay. The uh, was getting Prime to give me my own truck. <laughs> All right, so, so now now Prime got you. Now you're you're Prime driver. You you're driving for Prime. You're a company driver. Uh, what? You only been with Prime for such a a low period. What made you decide to go uh, to go lease so early in in your journey with Prime? Oh, I was. Yeah, I wasn't a company driver. I was. I guess I was technically when I was on my friend's truck. Um, but I decided to go lease because he was going lease, and um, I don't know. I guess there's more potential to make money that way, but there's a higher risk of not making money. Mm-hmm. So you could have a week where you're making like 2300 I think you're rich. And then the next week you got $0. And then you could go a couple weeks like that, you know, if things aren't going well. Like you get faulty equipment, bad loads, long deadheads, uh, claims, like anything could happen. And you could just have a string of bad luck and not have money for a couple weeks. But as a company driver, you'd be guaranteed that. But I guess I was a little bit too gun ho and I had a little bit too much trust in the system that I, I thought if I did my job, I'd be taken care of. Uh, and that wasn't always the case, unfortunately, in so, my experience. Everybody's so, experience is different. Of course, of course. Um, so your your journey uh, being a being a lease driver, did did you now? Now I know you said that you you know you wanted to get in there because of the money, and that's and I guess that's what's the main reason why people get taught into leasing because of the because of the money aspect uh to my understanding yeah, my- to my understanding prime lease is only like what a dollar a dollar ten a dollar twenty a dollar twenty at the most um i guess i've seen i've seen some higher paying rates than that um you know it's it you it, it give or take like i don't know it's i don't I guess I really never averaged it out, but I've gotten higher paying loads than that. Um, the problem is that sometimes you, I wouldn't ever take anything for less than a, than a dollar, you know, um, dollar fifty. Okay. But I guess you know a lot of times, like the good thing about leases, you could say I don't really want this; this doesn't pay, and you can turn it down, but they'll give you a hard time, you know, and try to guilt you into it or tell you. Oh well, if you take this, we'll get something better. And you, and and as a lease operator, what I started to learn is you you need to learn how to run your business. And if they want you to go, let like, let's say if they want you to go from New Mexico to Arizona to Deadhead, like they've done to me before, to go pick up the load, you tell them I need to be pre-planned on something, and I want to see how much is paying before I drive, you know, the however many miles it was, you know. Right, right. I go there. I, 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 I was, you know, I, I was, I was never a lease driver, but I, I do know the quote unquote favors. Hey, take this little chump change load right here, and and I'll, I'll make sure I have something for you on the rebound. Yeah, I, I, I had those before. Yeah. Um, my man, Chris, mm-hmm. my man, Christopher Robbins, uh, has a question. He says, um. He says, "Have you ever seen a three dollar load?" Oh God, I re- you know it's all such a blur. It's so weird because um, I'm not trucking right now, so my mind isn't there. It's possible. I can't specifically remember one, but 
but I, I know I've gotten some short runs. Like those are the ones that would be like a, like a Northeast, you know, day run, you know, like mm-hmm. so every once in a while, you know, you get stuck on this load that you don't want, but the only reason you'll take it is because it's like, okay, that's not a lot of miles. Okay. Yeah. It delivers at 2 a.m., but there's a place nearby to park. You know, you got to constantly weigh these things out. And, uh, you know, it'd be a crappy load that, that, that isn't a lot of miles, but it would, there'd be something really inconvenient about it if it's going to pay that much. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, there'd be some Christo- BS involved. <laughs> Christopher also wants to know is, are, since, uh, now I'm not sure, are, are you with, are you with Prime currently? No, not right now. I'm not with Prime. Oh. I, I, uh, I got off the road back in, um, April. Okay, we'll late we'll, April. We'll we'll find out about that in a second. But he says um, he wants to know: Are you part of the lawsuit uh, about the uh, lease contract that you signed? No, but I'm wondering if I might just be somehow part of it automatically, <laughs> which would be cool because maybe I uh, will stop getting letters from Prime that I owe them money. That'd be cool. Are you are you familiar with that lawsuit? What's what's that lawsuit entail? Yeah, I've heard, I've, I've heard about it. Uh, it, it's some guy, you know, a lot of us went through the same thing. Um, and, and there are people that will argue like, well, he just didn't know how to run his business or blah, blah, blah. You know, you could debate these things all day and I don't want to get into that because I do think Prime is a great company. If you want, if you want to get your CDL and you want to learn how to drive a truck, I, I'm glad I went through Prime, but I think, you know, um, when it comes to stuff like these major companies, Mm -hmm you're you're you get you fall through the cracks sometimes it's just gonna happen and you have to really be on your a game and really like ready to sacrifice everything including a life outside of trucking if you want to make money sometimes uh which a lot of truck drivers are aware of that that's like something that you you need to be aware of getting into it it you know if you want to if you want to if you want to eat sleep and breathe trucking every day all day Mm -hmm. um you might make a little bit more money than the person that wants to go home, at, you know, every other month. All right, so let's talk about uh, let's talk about your 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 journey there. You you was Wolf Prime for about a little bit over a year. Uh, of course, I I you you made some videos, <laughs> you made some videos along <laughs> the way. I I you know I'll probably you know show a clip of the one that I that I've seen, but uh, take us back yeah. to take us back to that night that uh that fateful night. I think that was your first incident. Um, take us back to that night when uh, you had that little, that little setback. Let everybody know what, what happened. All right. Um, I was at a Tyson plant in Alabama. Um, and it's funny cause I'm trucking. You, 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 sometimes you just like, I was going to go meet a friend in, in, in North Carolina. Like I was literally about to leave and go drive and go like meet up and have breakfast with my friend. And I'm like kind of in a rush and trying to get the hell out of there. And I drive up on the, um, the, the lady waves me like on, like the lady at the guard shack waves me on and there's a scale to the, uh, to the right of me. And then there's, um, there's a, uh, what do you call it? There's a scale to the right of me. And then there's the, 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 gate on the way out and I remember on the way in they made sure that I weighed they wanted me to weigh on my way in so I was like okay so they must want me to weigh on my way out she didn't really tell me which way to go she was standing in between the scale and the guard shack so I just went up on the scale because last time it was a whole big ordeal they wouldn't let me turn around I had to do some crazy maneuvers to get on the scale so I was like I don't want to do that again and have to go out onto the road and turn around you know Uh, so I made sure I got on the scale and she told me that I needed to back off the scale so she could check my seal first. And I was like, well, why don't I just go and turn around? And just like last time, she did not want me to turn around. And she was insistent that I backed off the scale. And I knew, it, I had the sense of knowing this is not a good idea, don't do it. And um, and I and I was really trying very hard to like be very careful. I wasn't rushing or anything. I was in a rush, but I was a little frustrated, you know. And I was looking out my windows and I'm making sure that my trailer is lined up and not hitting anything and I forgot about my my uh my drive tires <laughs> on my on my tractor mm-hmm. I wasn't really paying too much attention to those I was really more worried about the trailer and I felt like a like a earthquake I guess, you know looking back on it I felt I felt the 
the tires drop off the side of the the scale, and I was like, "What the fuck was that?" Sorry, I hope I can swear. And, <laughs> yeah, you um, good. You good. And, uh, I, I was in shock, and I was like, "I was like, okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything, you know, I'm still upright." So all of a sudden, I I could I could hear my tires spinning out. Nothing's happening, and I'm like, "Oh boy!" And I'm like rocking back and forth. So I I I set my brakes. I got out. I looked. And the lady was still standing there, just impatiently tapping her feet, waiting for me to back off the scale. And I walked around to the um, driver, to the passenger side, and I saw them hanging down. And, and I and I went to the lady, and I was like, we have a problem. She's like, what's the problem? Like, she was really rude about it. And I'm like, I'm getting pissed off at this point, you know? And I'm like, well, um, I can't go anywhere. And then she looked, and she just, like, shook her head and... She's like, well, you got to call somebody, basically. And it was my, you know, I, I had to pay 500 bucks and get pulled off the scale. And wow. they had to route people around the scale. And everybody was staring at me. And the so yard dogs were trying to help me. At, at that time, but, at that time, you was a lease driver. You you wasn't the company driver. So everything everything yeah. that could go wrong uh, went wrong for you. And everything that goes wrong had to come out of your pocket. Meaning, well, not your right. pocket, not your pocket physically. They they just took it out of your, out of your settlement, right? Settlement. Right. Yep. Wow. Uh, and that wasn't horrible because I mean it could have been way worse. I could have the whole truck could have fell over. That would have sucked, you know. Yeah, that, that um, would have. But so many other things could have happened. And um, it was one of those scales, you know, where it's like really, really just enough. It's just wide enough yeah, to drive onto. Yeah, and it's elevated and, like, off back, the ground. Backing off backing off of it is just stupid. Yeah, like, but why I, I would she why why, why would she it. want you to back off? Why you couldn't just drive forward? I, I don't understand that. That that I don't understand. I don't, I, they have their way of doing things. I tried to ask her too later. I was like, why couldn't I just pull forward so you could check check my seal? She goes, Because because that's not how we do it and blah 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 and it's just mm. like all right, whatever. Um and, so, and she wouldn't let me leave and turn around and back and whatever. So So that was that, your but lesson learned that that was your first you know, struggle. Always, yeah, that was your first struggle. Lesson was, learned. No, I wouldn't call that my first struggle. But well, no, no, no. I did the record. start the 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 start of the start of the struggle. So is there what what other yeah. struggles? What other struggles along the way that you that you had in your in your mm -hmm. driving career? A fun one. Uh, this one I remember a lot. I went to go pick up a trailer, a loaded trailer, at a Smithfield plant. Uh, I think in Virginia somewhere, I think maybe North Carolina, mm -hmm. and the um, the uh, landing gear was getting. <laughs> I'm like fishing for a lot of words I haven't had to use in a while. Um, the, <laughs> the landing gear got stuck, and I was trying to uh, raise the landing gear, and I was at the point where I was going to tell them, you know what, I because because when you get a trailer that's broken, they expect you to go sit with the trailer and get it fixed. And if you are going to be late, they're going to repower your load and take it away from you. So that's something I learned is like, if you're going to get like, if you get stuck with faulty equipment, even if it's not yours, you still are going to lose the load. They're not going to, especially if it's some, you know, the Walmart delivery or something like that, they're going to be like, they're going to have someone, you'll sit in the shop with that trailer for two days and then someone will come and take it from you. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you lose a bunch of money. Like nobody's going to take care of you. So you have to take care of yourself. So I was about to tell them, like, you know, this trailer's not working. Um, I need a different load, you know, because it's getting close to payroll cut off. I already knew, I already knew how that went at that point. I've, I've had enough of those experiences. So um, I got really frustrated and and like used all of my weight, and then all of a sudden the landing gear went up, and I'm like, all right, maybe I maybe I'm just really a beast and I fixed it, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, I went around the truck and did my pre trip before. Uh, before all that and um i could say this now because i'm not a driver anymore but i realized that half the landing gear went up and the other half didn't <laughs> so the on the other side um it's just there's a there's a, a beam that goes across that connects the you know the crank handle to the other side that broke it was all rusted out and and it was an old trailer it was like a 2014 so um you know my my little push that I did broke the landing gear, I guess. And, um, I was like not willing to sit in the shop and I couldn't get it to go back down. So I got to a point where, um, I, uh, I ended up having to go and deliver that load and go and drop the trailer off 
in Springfield to get fixed because mm-hmm. they had to put it on jack for me to be able to drop it. Um, but that sucked because I ended up stuck with um, a load that I didn't want with a broken trailer and had to go all the way up to, it was like I dropped it in Nashville, I think, and then had to drive from there to Springfield. I got you. I got you. Oh. So you, along yeah. a, along your relatively short journey with Prime, it, it, it sounds like you had a lot of a lot of bad than good there as far as as far as as far as your journey. Huh? Yeah, I mean, I've had some bad things happen to me, but overall, I'm super happy that I that I did it. You know, I don't regret any of it. Um, it. It was, a, it was a character building exercise for sure. I learned a lot uh, about myself and a lot of independence. I got, I mean, I gained a lot of independence, um, I would say. And uh, I don't know. I had a lot of fun. I got to see, I mean, I've already seen a bunch of the country before that, but I got to see even more of the country. And I got my CDL. So, you know? so, so overall, it's not a lot. So, of course, you've been with, so you, you've been with Prime. A, uh, a year and a half uh what what made you decide to uh to hang up the keys and and to become a civilian again i just wanted to be home i was i was really homesick i have uh i have my i had my boyfriend here he's my fiance now um but he was here and i just wanted to come home and it's funny because my story is a little bit bigger in the sense that I just moved to California and I was struggling and I came from New York and I guess while I was out on the road and I saw the whole country, I, I was able to uh, get that out of my system and realize that there's no place like home. And, uh, you know, I was able to appreciate, it. I think it was a, a missing piece of the puzzle for me to be able to come home and appreciate being in the place where I'm from and, uh, and appreciate the people here. Now trucking, and, um, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I mean, I guess long story short, I I guess I, just want, I was ready to come home and, and I could thank trucking for that in a way. So um, and the COVID stuff, it was kind of, you know, the uh, not being able to use bathroom um, at shippers and receivers and like that. It was really it was the, it was early on in the COVID stuff. So mm-hmm. um, there was a lot of stuff we didn't really know. We didn't know how dangerous it was. We didn't know you know, a lot of things about COVID-19 and there was so much uncertainty. And I just, I guess coming home felt like the safest option too, in that sense at the time, which now I'm, I don't think it's as big of a deal as they are saying it is. And I'm not, you know, I'm not afraid to say that. Uh, (laughs) that Yeah. yeah, That's another, that's another uh, controversy uh, topic right there in itself, <laughs> you know. Person. Should I wear the mask? Should I wouldn't? Should I shouldn't wear the mask? Oh, definitely yeah. wear it. Yeah, wear it's... it. Wear the mask for sure. I would say wear the mask, but don't live your life with fear. The, <laughs> uh, you know, trucking. Uh, unfortunately, trucking is just isn't for everybody. I mean, at least you, at least you went out there and and gave it a shot, and then you actually realized that say. Hey, you know, nah, this this just really isn't for me. Do you still uh, are, you still have your CDL? Are you gonna are you gonna ever use your CDL again? I actually do want to start driving again. Um, I would love to uh, to um, eventually get a local job. Probably uh, one thing I would like to see change. At some point, as I, I think that they and you guys are going to think I'm crazy for saying this, but you got to hear me out here. I think um, if if they could change the way they test for marijuana, I'd be really happy. Like I think that when you're home and you're not driving, and let's say you get weekends off, I don't see why you can't. You know, you you come home Friday night, let's say, and you smoke a joint, you should be able to go to work on Monday uh, because in my mind, alcohol is much more dangerous and. Um, has more of a negative effect and I could get away with if I wanted to you hopping in a truck and driving hungover which I wouldn't do you want to be on on your best game while you're driving because it's a it's a you know it, it's a safety intensive job and there's a lot of people's lives that you could put at risk so I'm not in any way condoning getting in a truck and driving around under the influence of anything but I think it should be treated the same way as alcohol if you're not under the influence at that current time 
I, I think that what people do on their own free time should be up to them. Like I, you know, um, Smoke weed every day. I, I'm not. So, yeah. <laughs> so you, like, so you're an advocate. Uh, you're 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 an advocate of the uh, of uh, of of uh, of smoking weed every day, huh? Well, not every day, but well, just just on your time. Every day, on your own time, your own personal time. I, I, I it's an outrageous idea, but it's 2020. I think we can maybe handle the the concept of like, I'm not saying. And the thing is, too, there are more highly illegal, more highly dangerous drugs that are out of your system. I know people that I've known people in the past that have done drugs way worse than weed and gotten away with it because it's out of your system within a day. And they can hop back on the road. I don't think it should be that way. It's one of the it's one of the safest, um, you know, vices that that are out there, and it, it stays in your system for a long time because it's not toxic. It doesn't. Your body isn't trying to push it out. So that's the only reason it just hangs out in your fat cells like that for potentially thirty days. So if I'm out on the road, some old lady drives into my into my uh, into the side of my truck, and I didn't even do anything wrong. If I smoked weed a month ago, I could be in big trouble because <laughs> mm. they're going to give you an instant drug test if you get a, an accident on, on the road like that, even if it's not your fault. Mm. Okay. So, so I think I think that they changed that a little bit, um, and that would definitely make sweeten the deal for me because uh, I, I went two years out there on the road without smoking at all, and I will tell you I'm a way happier person when when I can medicate myself on my on my own time. <laughs> I got you. I got you, man. Will so many uh will so many female drivers be getting, you know, that has a lot of shit thrown at them. How did you how did you handle uh how did you handle being uh being discouraged by other drivers while you was out on the road? Actually, that's a that's a really good point. I I've, I've always wanted a chance to talk about this. Um I've had like it's 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 hard because like when you're out there I was actually really, I want, I want to say that I was a, a fairly good backer, even though I backed off the scale, you know, I, I wanted to be real in my journey. I wanted people to know that I wasn't trying to pretend I was a perfect truck driver. And, you know, there's reality that sometimes we all have to face. Um, but I, I would say that with my experience, I, I, I was a pretty good backer and I've gotten some compliments on, on some of the spots I've gotten into. Like he would say, Oh, not bad for a woman. And I'm like, what? And, and that's the thing, like, I I'm comp I felt that was a compliment and an insult at the same time. Like, I'm like, you know, I'm not your average girl. I get it. But also, you know, that's, that's not nice. Like, just assuming just because someone's a girl, they can't back. Um, and I'm sure maybe a lot of this, a lot of these stereotypes might come from people's experience of obser observation, you know. Maybe they see a bunch of girls do some stupid stuff and they think, oh, whatever. So I've noticed there have been times where people have, like, come to my aid when I didn't need it. Um, I don't know if that happens to you guy drivers out there, but it pissed, it was so annoying when I had it and I knew what I was doing and there was always somebody like trying to help me. Um, and I know it sounds like, you know, a jerk thing to say, but it puts more pressure on me. It makes me more nervous when someone's standing there and I can't see what they're, I can't see what direction they're pointing and I'm trying to pay attention to where my trailer is, not what they're doing, you know? And then they're over there trying to tell me to do it this way and I'm just trying to do it the way that I know how and, um, right. one time some guy like told me like, Oh, he like, whenever someone came over, I didn't know what, why they were trying to help me. Is it, is it cause I'm a girl? Is it that simple? Or am I really screwing up? You know? And this one guy came over and tried to help me and I, I let him help me and whatever. And then um, I got out of the truck to drop my trailer and he started talking about my butt <laughs> and just like standing there talking about my butt. And I'm like, I, I, I got so like, I, Get away I didn't know from what to me. do. And, I, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And I'm all by myself in the this yard with this dude. And I'm just like, I just want to get the hell out of there. I was so like disgusted. He says, like, he was like, can I get some of that? And I was like, what? I was like, some of that, what? Like, I was like, please don't say what I think you're going to say. He's like that booty. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Well, he, he probably could have, you, know, you know, he probably could have just been, uh, <laughs> it probably could have just been funny, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Tammy Turner, what's going on? David Garcia, what's going on? Melvin McMichaels, what's going on? Uh, let me back up to what Christopher said. He said he missed that devil's lettuce every day. I miss it one day when I retire, I'll come back. But 
I miss it every day. Friends are still doing it. I miss it every day. Uh, David Garcia, what's going on? Tammy Turner, she says that the roles can get very loading. I mean, lonely. Loading? Yeah. <laughs> lonely. Yeah. She says, uh, she says Both. dating. Thank she says dating as a trucker is very difficult and that's enough. That's a good, that's a good segue. So you, at the time, you know, you said that the, your guy friend was your boyfriend at the time. How was, ha how he mm -hmm. was handling you being out over the, over the road? Well, I actually, so I don't, you know, you guys can track all this on my YouTube. So I don't feel like I'm giving you too much information, but um, him and I started dating while I was out on the road and actually before him, um, I was, I was dating somebody else. And that is a good testament as to how trucking can affect a relationship <laughs> because the first relationship I was in did not end up uh, lasting, even though him and I started long distance and moved to California to be with him, uh, going out over the road just became too much. Um, it, it was hard to keep track of everything, you know, like between finances and how much time we spent together and, you know, this, that, and the other thing, it just, it got so overwhelming. And I think it really took the, uh, the fun out of our relationship. <laughs> and, mm. um, it's, it's, it's a good test though. If you can make it through, uh, being a truck driver and being in a relationship, you know, you got a good relationship. That's um, what's up. So, uh, you know, I ended up dating this current guy who's actually, um, somebody I've known for a pretty long time, like later on him and I ended up dating and, um, he was aware of, of my situation. I was nervous to get into another relationship. And, um, I think we would have been okay long term. Uh, I just, just, I was so sick of it at that point. And, you know, I, he was, he was handling it better than me. I was having a hard time. I was just like, I just wanted to come home. And I, and I just, I, maybe I was afraid of another relationship now working too, you know, who so knows. So but, now, so now he's, so now he's your fiance now. So the relationship is a little yeah. bit tighter now, right? Yeah. He actually proposed to me while I was on the road. Oh, okay. Um, That's what's up. Because he wanted me to know he was, he, he was, he yeah. was going to be 100 with you. Grateful. I, so he didn't want to lose. I'm, 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 I want to, I want to thank you for, uh, taking the time out to come on to the show and chopping it up with me. I know, I know that we have been going, you know, back and forth trying to, uh, you know, trying to come together and make this happen. Um, you know, I think it was like, what about, I'd say about last year, like, or early this I was year. on the road. Yeah. I think it was like the early. Yeah, I, I think I reached out to you early this year. I think that's when that when I seen the video. I'm not sure. I I seen the video and that's when I reached out to you. Um, if you had to, if if you had the chance to, you know, to go back and do it all over again, would you would have got into trucking? Oh yeah, I honestly, I want to tell you guys as a as even though I wasn't out there that long, it, it it's true when they say it gets in your blood. Like I have, I have, okay. I live on, I live on a, a, a major trucking route. It, it goes right through the town that I live in, a small mm -hmm. town. And I look out the window and I get so literally just lame and excited. Every time I see a truck, I like, I'm like, yeah, look at truck, a truck. Like, I don't know what it is, but it, it's in my heart. It's in my soul. I, who knows? I might end up back out there one day. I'm, I'm not objected to that. I just, at that point in time, it just wasn't good for me. Um, you know, but I'm happy I did it. And I, I would most definitely, if, if life presented, you know, the, the situation where it made sense for me to go out there again, I would do it. All right. Um, what, what if, sure if, that I if you couldn't, <laughs> if you couldn't get into trucking, what would have been your plan B? Oh, uh, well, I, uh, music and, and, uh, video editing and, and creative stuff. I, I, uh, I have my degree in digital media. I'm supposed to be a graphic designer, but, um, you got to put you got to put time into these things if you actually want to do it and a lot of my time was put into uh moving to california getting into trucking and moving home for the past like five years four or five years so um now i'm you know now i feel like i'm in a stable place so i could start focusing on that stuff again so anything artistic that i could do remotely from home would be ideal <laughs> now grateful where i don't I have to like 
I I live I've, anywhere, you know. I I've been following you for uh for a while since I since I seen your first video, so you know I clicked on that subscribe button, and I think uh I think I'm following you on your Instagram as well. I'm not sure, but I'll I'll find out if I am. But uh during during your journey uh in trucking, um you you lost a loved one. You you want to talk about that? Oh yeah, that that I wasn't gonna dive into that because I didn't know uh, I didn't know if we were gonna go there. But yeah, um, I uh, I lost my mom actually while I was so that really put a hiccup in my trucking. I would say uh, that was probably the biggest downer. <laughs> um, it puts things into perspective, you know. My mom, uh, it was April of 2019, I think. I was just in my own truck, literally just just started my, on my journey. I was doing good actually. I was like kind of rocking it i felt really good about myself and i get a call that my mom had cancer and six months later she was gone so in that six months i i moved home uh well i didn't move home i stayed in my hometown of oneana which is on the news right now uh for a big uh outbreak at the college covid outbreak um, but luckily it stayed with the college kids and i haven't heard of any hospitalizations yet but um but yeah, so I was in Oneana and I was staying with her and uh, I had to basically, it, it was one of the hardest things I ever had to do, um, but I I thought it was the right thing to do at the time. I went back out on the road. Uh, she was mentally not there anymore and, and my brother was there taking care of her, but uh, I left her there and she died and it sucked. And then I was thinking, you know, maybe this, maybe, uh, maybe my priorities are a little bit off, you know. Maybe I just need to come home and be with the people that I care about and spend my time with them and not be out here trying to face this this uh, this paycheck that sometimes happens and sometimes doesn't, you know. Yo, so yo, I you, just, you was close. I was, you was close to your mother. I was. She was like my best friend. Um, we would talk every day, and uh, she was like, you know, I moved to California and I never, I haven't lived. I moved 70 miles away from her when I turned 18 and that was a big deal, but, um, we still talked every day. And then I moved to California and we still talked every day and I was on the road and I made sure I called her out uh, while I was out on the road every day. And, um, cancer does some really bad things to your body and your brain and your mind. And, um, she wasn't really recognizable by the time I left, you know, couldn't really talk to her. So I was like, why am I here? You know? So I went out on the road and I thought maybe it would get my mind off of things and, I wasn't there for her when she passed. So my I think condolences. that was, yeah, I think that was a big, a big part of me wanting to come home too. Like I just wanted to, you know, I wanted to be with my, with my boyfriend and I have so many friends here that I wanted to be with. And, um, I, I realized like you, the time that you have with people is precious. Yes, it is. Uh, yes, it I, is. I missed a lot while I was on the road and I, I, and I thought that I was just doing what I be doing you know when i when i you know but, i that that's one of the that's one of the reasons why i decided not to do otr no more and to do regional because i wanted to be home every week you know i wanted to see my moms you know what i'm saying she's up there you know she's enjoying her twilight years and all like that and i want to enjoy the rest that i got with her because a lot of people that i have known personally you know losing their you know, losing their loved ones. And it's just, you know, uh, you know, I can't, I can't phantom. I can't phantom it. You know what I'm saying? I know my time, I know my time for that is, I know my time for that is coming, but you know, just right. to see, just to see, uh, you know, to see what people going through when they, when they lose their loved ones, you know, is, is, yeah. What did the, what you did- You can't get that back. Hmm? I said, you don't get that time back. It's, it's very, no, and, and if anything, if I could, if I could do anything for anybody, it's to inspire them to value those, those moments that are uh, precious. Like it, it really hurts me when I see people being disrespectful to their family members and people that I know they're going to feel bad when they're gone, you know? So if you ever like, you know, if you ever feel like, you know, any other way, just remember that one day either you'll be dead or they'll be dead. You know, somebody's going to die. <laughs> So you gotta try to, you gotta try to take take advantage of that time when you have it. So. So yeah, I agree. I agree. I, it's 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 hard. I just got finished talking to a young lady 
uh, yesterday. So definitely, or day before yesterday, stay tuned for that. Uh, her mother was killed on the highway. Um, I got a chance to talk to yeah. her about that. So <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it, uh, it <laughs> it's crazy. It, it, it really is. And again, my condolences goes out to you. Uh, grateful. So, uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, how did the company, how, how did Prime, because, you know, you was out of the road, you got the call. Uh, of course, you know, you felt some kind of way you had to pull over, you know, probably had to catch yourself. But when you told Prime about, you know, hey, you know, my mother passed, I'm going to need, uh, you know, I'm going to need some time to myself or a load to get me back home so I can, you know, take care of my family issues. How did Prime help you in 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 that regard? Well, um, there's two different parts of this. So there's the time where I went home when I found out she had cancer, and then there's the time I had to go home again to do her funeral. Uh, both of those things kind of tie into each other in a way. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, the first thing. Uh, when I found out that she had cancer, I asked to, to get uh, the closest terminal to where I lived at the time was the Pittston, Pennsylvania terminal. Mm -hmm. uh, well, not where I lived, where my mom was at. Uh, so I told them I needed to get to Pittston, and they said, okay, we'll get you a load there. They tried to send me from North Carolina to Illinois, and I said, no, that's the wrong way. I, I got to get home, like, now. Like, my mom needs me. She's scared, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and they were like, well you know, we'll get you a load there from Illinois. And I'm like, I'm not playing this game. I need to get home now. <laughs> so I literally, uh, they wouldn't let me drop my trailer because the way it is, they want you to keep your trailer close to where you're going to be dispatched mm -hmm. so that they don't have trailers all over the country, you know, um, that aren't being used. So I brought my trailer home. I, I, I basically deadheaded from, I, I deadheaded, I think it was like a 15, 16 hour day. Um, and I put myself on uh, personal conveyance for the last part of it, and I didn't care. I was like, I'm getting home. Like this is more important than any of the, the stupid BS with the regulations. I don't, I don't care. Right. So I went home. I dropped my trailer in Pittston, uh, drove my truck to Oneonta, which was two hours from there, and stayed there for a week with my truck, trying to figure out how serious it was, mm -hmm. to see if I needed to, to turn in my truck or not. And I remember I was. Uh, I felt like I was waiting too long for information. So I went back out on another run. And then while I was out in, um, I think I ended up in like up by one of the great lakes up there somewhere, like, um, Minnesota or something. I don't know. So I was up there and, um, and I got a call like that. It was really serious. And I, you know, like it's not looking good. So I brought my, um, I ended up bringing my truck to Pittston and turning it in and, and it was all, I thought it was all sorted out. And I told them, you know, like, I'll be back. I don't plan on leaving forever. I just need to be there for my mom and, and, and take the time. And um, I ended up getting a summer job doing photography for a baseball camp out there called, um, I don't remember what it was called, Cooperstown Junior Park. It was a Cooperstown Junior Park. It's like the little league, like, go and they do a big thing for the Baseball Hall of Fame. Um, so I was doing the photography for that. And um, that's, like, near where I lived in Oneana at the time. And I remember calling my dispatcher, telling them like, "Hey, um, what do I need to do to, to so that um, can I can can I get signed back onto my uh, you know my team driver's truck and he can pick me up for a couple of weeks and then I can come back and that way I can stay with Prime." And he was like, basically like, "No, you can't do that." And I'm like, "Okay, but I just want you to know I am coming back. Like I I want to get back on my own truck. I just need to work this stuff out." And he's like, "Oh, it's fine, it's fine." And then when it came time, I I was out from uh, May to um, August. And I, I gave him a heads up um, in July that I was coming back. So May, June, July. So it was like three months, maybe, or a little bit less. And I told him I was coming back, and he told me that um, I had to reapply, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, all right, whatever. So I had to reapply and start as a new hire. And they were trying to tell me that because I left last time, I had to team for a year before I could get back on my own truck. And I got really upset about that. And I was like, I'm not doing that. Like, I, I'd already told you, you know, I had to leave. Like, we, we were, we had an understanding. So, um, and they were also telling me that I still had to, um, I had to start my, my year over again with, with paying them back for the CDL school. Mm -hmm. So, like, I was already, like, 
a couple months away from paying that all off. They wanted me to start that all over again. So I had to go and get a doctor's note and a bunch of other information and submit it to the um, Stan. It was like Stan, I think, or whoever it is downstairs at the, um, a lot of prime drivers and that's what I'm talking about, but he's, he's in charge of like orientation and, and training and stuff like that. I had to submit something to him so that he would let me pick up where I left off basically. So I picked up where I left off and, and I tried to forget about, you know, my dispatcher, or my recruiter telling me that I needed to, to sit, like stay on my, my friend's truck for a year. Cause neither of us wanted that. <laughs> I'm wow. not going to team for a year. You know, I, I wanted to get back out there into my own truck again. So, um, at one point I just told him it was time for me to get back on my own truck and he, I had to battle him and eventually he let me get back on my own truck, but it wasn't without a fight. And that really bothered me because I felt like he wasn't taking into account that my mom was dying, you know? Mm -hmm. So then while I was out there, I was still teaming at the time. Actually, I, I skipped the part. My mom did pass away and, um, I got the call in the middle of the night, um, and we were luckily shut down at that point. We weren't driving. And um, I, and I had my teammate with me on the truck, so I wasn't alone. Um, and then uh, I went home for a week and did the funeral stuff. And luckily, because I was on a team truck, we didn't really lose any revenue for that. Okay. Because he went and did a few local runs and then came back and got me. So. Grateful. But it was kind of annoying how they how they – they made me feel like I was going to be able to leave and come back without a problem. And then there was a problem, <laughs> you know, you know, sometimes, so you know, just, sometimes that's, you know, to find out about all of that is, is, is in your research with companies to see how, you know, to, to see how they will react. I mean, you know, we never know that, you yeah. know, the questions to ask, until it actually happens you know what i'm saying yeah so i thought i gonna be okay enough, but that wasn't enough <laughs> that's uh that's so. crazy but again as i said before i am so sorry that that I, that that had happened to you uh, my condolences uh is out to you and uh and yeah so right now um uh, Right now, you know, I'm about to, you know, I know you got to go to work and everything and I'm about to let you go. And you uh, you've been on here with me for for a little bit. So I do appreciate that. But uh, out of all the trucking companies that was out there at the time. Um, did you ever give any other company consideration, you know, even after your even after your guy friend said, hey, come over to Prime and, you know, do this with Prime. But yeah. have you ever gave have you ever gave any other companies uh, any consideration uh, while you was doing your, you know, your research and everything? Um, if I if I could drive for any company, I think ideally OCR, I, I see Landstar being a good option just because you um, have a little bit more control, uh, but you have to have your own truck. Um, but I think that for what where I was at, uh, I think Prime was perfect. They let me have my dog with me. Um, they had good equipment. They had newer trucks. They had a really nice terminal. Um, I could, it, you know, if I was nearby a terminal, even if I was dead broke, um, which sucks being a truck driver and being dead broke, but <laughs> if I was in that situation, I could always get food. I could swipe it to my car, you know, um, at the terminal and um, it would come out of my settlement and they had like that uh, really cool, the Oasis Hotel with the Fire and Ice Bar. Like, they had some cool amenities and I, I really appreciated them. Uh, they were flexible in ways uh, in other ways, not so much. And I noticed that the dispatch side was way cooler when I was on flatbed. I had zero complaints once when I was on flatbed. Once I went on to uh, Reaper was when I started having the problems with the with with being treated subhuman, and you know, suddenly I, I felt less um, like an asset to the company and more like a, I don't know, like a like a mule or something, <laughs> you know. But uh, I I I liked Prime overall, though I. I wouldn't change the way I did it. I think it was a great place to go to get my CDL. Well, that's what's up. Uh, that's what's up. Grateful Thread, everybody. <laughs> Grateful. What do you uh what what do you have uh what do you have set up 
right now uh I, your your latest videos on your on your youtube uh shows you in a band so oh yeah, uh, yeah let us let us know what you got going right now what's what's going on in your life right now after trucking so I hit that video because it only got three likes and three dislikes and like 75 views. So I'm like, well, maybe I'm not ready to share my band yet, but maybe I'll put it back up just because I want people, if anybody goes to my channel, I want you to know that this is a, this is a recording where I put my iPhone in the middle of a room. We weren't, this wasn't a professional recording. This was just a band practice and I was just excited to hear our band coming together. But, um, my fiance actually and I, um, are in this band together. He's in the picture. So he's the guitarist. His, his best friend since he was I guess for the last 26 years they've been playing together he's the drummer so it's cool I got like a built in like chemistry between the two of them because they both are really good at playing together mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I've always been into music like if you go back through my YouTube you can see that I've, I post videos of me playing guitar a lot and singing yeah. um, I'm really excited because I've had I've been in bands but I've never had a band like I feel like I actually like have some musicians that are willing to listen to the um the songs that i wrote and try to try to turn them into full band songs rather than like me just learning their songs you know okay so okay. um that's really exciting so the song that i just posted i'm gonna unhide it just so that so your viewers can go check it out the song that i posted is something that i wrote a, a while back um years ago and um and we were that it's, it's a completely different song now because the band was able to uh to help me you know add instrumentals i'm going to play bass in it eventually but so the guy to the right of me is my fiance and then the other dude is um his his uh drummer and i think i think together we we have some potential okay. at the very least that's what's up the, that's what's up local, yeah so i'm excited about music is like my number one um passion in life so well, if I could do music I'm happy well shout out to you and your uh and to you and your fiance um definitely I hope uh I hope that works out for you when you uh get married and everything uh shout out to you for your uh trucking career at least you came out there and you tried to do the damn thing but as I said before you know unfortunately you know it's not for everyone uh but at least you got out there and and, and you gave it your all you know what I'm saying? That's all you could do. That's all you can do. So again, grateful. Yes. Thank, thank you. I, I really do appreciate you coming on here. Uh, yes, Christopher yes. Robinson, you very welcome. This was a very good interview. I, I gotta admit, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed myself. <laughs> so yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah. So grateful. If you ever want to come back on, man, make sure you reach out. You know, you got the number. You can holler at your boy and. You know, you can come on here and chop it up and, just, you know, talk about whatever you want. I appreciate it. I would love that. Thank you. You're very welcome. And if you guys want to come on and chop it up with the Lockout Men, you can do that. You can hit me up in the Gmail. That's Lockout Men Podcast at gmail.com. Or you can go over to the Instagram and hit me up over there. You know what I'm saying? That's what we do. Cool conversation. I talk to everybody. I send out a lot of I send out a lot of invites and and everybody want to come on and talk to me. That's that's how I am. I open up the platform and I thank you for it. If you guys like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, hit that bell and that all button for more. And if you want to hook your boy up, you know, support the channel, you can do that by the coffee app in the description below or the cash app. Dollar sign, lockout man. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, I get thirsty. It's like, it's like I said about the smart water. This is some good shit. You guys really got to try this, man. If you haven't tried it, I'd suggest you try it because this is some good shit. Anyway, thank you very much, everybody, for watching. I want to shout out to everybody that's in the Lockout Men community that joined us today. I want to shout out to Christopher Robin Trucking. The world is mine. Uh, Chicago BBW, Tammy Turner, David Garcia, Melvin McMichael, and anybody and Shape World, and anybody else that wants to uh, that was in here. Thank you very much for watching. Yo, 
That's it. I am done. You guys take it easy. And we'll co I'll come back at you with another video, I guess. You guys take it easy, and I'll talk to you later. Peace. Yo, you still here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, that was fun.